As we move along the current era and head into the next one, futuristic cities and various other mega projects have come into vision for many countries, with construction already underway in some of them. Kuwait happens to be one such country, which stands to reason as, according to the World Bank, they are the fifth richest country in the world when it comes to gross natural income per capita. Kuwait's currency, the Kuwait dinar, also boasts the highest value in the world at the moment. You'll only get back 0.31 dinar in exchange for a US dollar, which goes to show how much financial clout the country wields. This leaves them well capable of pursuing the most skyward of ambitions in the most literal of senses. The Kuwaiti government is currently working tirelessly on developing what will be one of the most luxurious cities in the world, one which would rival just about anything Dubai, one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, has to offer. But before we get into that, do take a moment to subscribe to our channel. And if you enjoy the video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. So, back to Kuwait. As part of an initiative branded Kuwait Vision 2035, the Western Asian nation has made notable forays into the construction of a cutting-edge location called Silk City. Kuwait Vision 2035 saw the development and opening of Terminal 4, T4, in the country's international airport in 2018, which led to them welcoming 14 million travelers in 2019. However, they are far from satisfied and are looking to continue to mold a reputation as an international tourism superpower. Silk City, also known as Madinat Al Harir, is being built on a desert plot in the northern region of Sibiya, spanning 250 square miles across Kuwait Bay from the country's capital, Kuwait City. The $132 billion estimated to cover its construction has already been raised, so it's all a matter of when Kuwait will present the finished project to the world market. Silk City, which is expected to take 25 years to reach completion, is being constructed with the aim of decreasing Kuwait's dependency on oil and directing a shift towards tourism. Oil accounts for 90% of Kuwait's income right now, but should all of their plans for Silk City come to fruition, tourism will become their most profitable sector. Kuwait Vision 2035 is expected to see the Arabian country transition into a financial and trade hub, both regionally and internationally, which should go a long way toward attracting investors while helping them get on par with other Arab neighbors in the Gulf. This is exactly what the country hopes to achieve with Silk City, and construction is moving along despite receiving opposition from elected members of parliament. The mega project is also part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, an infrastructure development strategy undertaken by the Chinese government to invest in multiple countries and organizations. 149 countries have signed up to date. Silk City will be completed in phases, the first of which includes the Sheikh Jaber Al Ahmad Al Sabah Causeway, which took a reported $3 billion to build and is one of the longest of its kind. The causeway was completed and inaugurated in 2009 and was in itself one of the largest and most challenging construction projects in the world. Built to link Silk City to northern Kuwait, the causeway cut travel time down to 15 minutes as opposed to the one and a half hours it took to go around Kuwait Bay. The lengthy bridge also passes through two small artificial islands, which were privately developed. The Mubarak al-Kabir port is part of the first phase, too. It was reported that it was just over 50% complete. The COVID-19 pandemic should have slowed things down drastically, but it should be well on its way to completion by now. The port, also part of the aforementioned Belt and Road Initiative, as well as Kuwait's Gulf Railway project, is the most expensive port in the region and is among the country's largest infrastructure projects. It's planned to be quite expensive expansive and won't just serve Kuwait, as the likes of China, Iran, and Iraq are also set to benefit, which will in turn forge stronger trade links. Last year, it was announced that links to Pakistan's Gwadar port will be developed, and there is the possibility of fostering partnerships with Africa, Eastern Europe, and Central Europe, as China's Belt and Road Initiative aims to promote trade within all of those regions. Per Kuwait Vision 2035, the nation's northern region will be developed by the Northern Economic Zone, which includes Subia, Babian Island, Abdali, and other northern locations. Whatever developments set to be undertaken are being done with strengthening economic ties with Iraq and Iran in mind. So what should we expect to find in Silk City when it's all completed? Madinat Al Harir will offer hotels, residential areas and facilities, business facilities, unique nature and wildlife reserves, and plenty more. All of those will be part and parcel of a free trade zone. The project will be split to mostly cater to business culture and leisure. It's understood that it will house up to 700,000 residents while providing around 450,000 new jobs. 
An Olympic stadium and duty-free site shopping location will also be part of this grand project. The under-construction city will be split into four specific districts, including Finance City, which will be near a new airport and have a business center encouraging regional and international trade, Leisure City, which will be home to resorts, a sports academy, and a medical and marine sports center, Ecological City, which will offer parks, nature reserves and reservations, and a facility for environmental studies, as well as an unpopulated atmosphere surrounded by green belt gardens and green spaces in the center of Silk City. The fourth district, Cultural City, will be dedicated to academic, diplomatic, and political affairs. A tower named Burj Mubarak al-Kabir will be one of the main attractions born out of this mega project. The structure will be in a central location, and the plan is for it to be 1,001 meters tall, in keeping with the Arabian folktale compilation 1001 Arabian Nights. While skyscrapers aren't usually made up of more than 80 floors, Silk Cities will have well over 200 and will be able to accommodate 7,000 people. The tower will comprise seven vertical villages with hotels, living spaces, offices, and entertainment hubs. Given its height, the Mubarak Al-Kabir Tower will be susceptible to potential disasters caused by strong winds, so it has been designed to feature three interlocking towers twisted 45 degrees to provide proper support and keep it safe from powerful gusts. The design also includes vertical ailerons, running along the length of the building on each of its edges to redirect winds that would otherwise cause structural noise. The building is designed to be taller than the current tallest building in the world, Dubai's Burj Khalifa, which stands at 828 meters. However, it's not the tallest building under construction at the moment, with the Jeddah Tower set to be 1,008 meters in height and currently under construction, while the Tokyo Sky Mile Tower, still in planning, should reach 1,700 meters. The Mubarak Al-Kabir Tower was initially projected to be completed after the Jeddah Tower, which won't be done before 2026, but before the Tokyo Sky Mile Tower, estimated to reach completion in 2045. Kuwait and China have deals in place over the development of Silk City. Apart from benefiting from trade and other services the project will be able to provide, they are reported to be set for a percentage of Silk City's profit for the first hundred years of its existence, having signed a collaboration agreement in 2014 before returning to the table for an additional deal four years later. Given the magnitude of it all, we won't see a complete Silk City for a while yet. There is quite a lot that needs to be done before that can happen, and you can be certain that the design team will continue to make additions along the way. So, Silk City could end up being a very different place from what's been described here. If all goes according to plan, though, there's little doubt that the country will meet the goals it has set out to achieve, despite growing competition from other entities in the region. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you will be alerted once we upload a new video. Do stay tuned, we have a lot more coming up.